Hey everybody, it's Lastrum here again with another video tutorial highlighting the Decentraland SDK. Today we're going to show you how to use the DCL Builder HUD library. This handy tool allows you to position items using the SDK in 3D space without worrying about the math of the positions or the decimal places. Uh, essentially, it's a 3D remote for your local preview environment that connects you to your scene and your entities. So you can essentially choose an entity within your scene, modify its position, its rotation, or its scale from within the previewer. You don't have to modify the code at all. It's pretty cool stuff, so let's jump in and take a look. And you can see here I've already loaded up a template scene and installed the library to show you the finished product. We have the remote over here on the right, all of these different arrows and options that we'll get into in a second but wanted to show you the end result of what we're looking to accomplish. So let's start with a fresh scene and we can install the Builder HUD from there. So what I'm gonna do now is open up a new terminal at a, a new folder and I'm gonna do DCL init and I'm gonna install the template scene. I'm gonna choose scene and cube spawner to download as you can see my folders populating the necessary dependencies for a template scene. Once that's done, I'm actually gonna install one more thing and that's the Builder HUD tool. So it's npm i at DCL Builder HUD. We're gonna let that install. And let's run DCL start to get our template scene up and running. So our template scene will be up and running. Here is the code for our cube spawner template. Okay, so we have our template scene here with the cube spawner just rotating. Uh, what we're going to do is show you how to use this builder HUD tool, install it, add it to entities, and then maneuver the entities within the scene. So on the GitHub page, We've already done step one. Now we have to import it into our scene so that we can use it. So let's go to our code and let's get rid of everything from the cube spawner. And let's import our builder HUD from the library we installed. The next thing is we have to define some entities. So let's define a red box. Let's give the red box a shape. Let's give the red box some transform to start with. And we'll do, again, I'm moving a little fast, but I'm using the shortcuts. Uh, you guys will get there once uh, you've had some time. Now we need to add a component, a new material, okay. And then we can get the material and the color will be red. Now let's add this box to the engine. Excuse me. And let's check out our code in our scene. We have our red box. Fabulous. Let's go up here and turn off our FPS panel. And you'll notice we now have our builder HUD. We have this from importing our HUD from the library. So when we click on this, we actually get our remote. And so right now, here are some options for our remote. We have a, a scaffolding and positioning and moving the scaffolding, which we can get to in a second. We have where our entity information is gonna be. Again, zero, 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 because we haven't attached any entity to the HUD, to the remote. And then we can position, rotate, and scale with all of these icons over here. We can click this to hide it. So now that we have an entity, we need to add our remote to it. So let's go to our code and show you how to do that. One thing we've done here is set up a red box. So it's very simple to add our red box to our HUD. All you have to do is type HUD and attach to entity and pass in the entity variable. Click save and you're done. There's one final thing though that a lot of people 
mess up or forget is actually defining the name of your entity. This allows us to uh, understand in the remote what we want to position. So you'll see here my label for red box came up. That's because I've said this entity has a label red box. So now I can see that red box label here. And you'll notice since it's attached to the HUD, it is now selected as the entity that I'm going to move. So let's get to moving entities. Over here on the right is the HUD. We can hide it and show it. We have uh, colored axes, right? So if we're standing facing north, to the right is positive x, to the left is negative x. This is backwards z, this is forward z, and these are up and down for y. These also correspond to our axis in the corner for a better visual help. If we wanted to move this entity that's already attached, all we have to do now is click any one of these arrow keys to move it in that direction. And you can see it moving in that direction. Pretty cool, right? And you'll notice that we're on the position modifier, so it's X, Y, Z are updating in real time on the remote. A couple other buttons. We have the modifier itself, so we're on P for position. If we click R, you'll notice it changes to rotation. And then we click scale and it changes to scale. So we can go back to position and move this around. The other button we have is the precision button. So right now we're moving by one square at a time. As you notice, the X goes up by one, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Not too precise. If I want to get a little more precise, I click on the precision tool and it now changes it to decimals of 0.1. And now you notice it moves just a little bit smaller. If I click it again, it gets even a little more precise. If I click it one more time, it gets really, really precise. You see it's barely moving. You can see I'm moving by the thousandth in any direction. Okay. If I wanted to get back to the one position, I can do this. Now that also works for rotation. So if I choose my modifier to be rotation, I now get rotational degrees of 90, 15, 5, and 1 for the precision. So I can rotate it 15 degrees and rotating it around the y-axis spins it like this, as you can see. Rotating on the z, <clears throat> excuse me, will spin it like this. And the x will spin it like this. Pretty crazy. That's by 15 degrees. I can go by 5 degrees or I can go by 1 degree. Okay. The last one is clicking the modifier again for scale. And now we are on, again, a 1, a 0 0.1, 0 0.01, or 0 0.001 modifier. And scaling is what stretches the box. So you can see we've rotated it quite crazily. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save this, right? And we're going to have our scene be reset. So there's our box. So I can show you a nice clean scale. And so if I scale it to the X, you'll notice it gets wider that way. Scale it to the Z. And I can scale it thickness this way. can now click the P button and move it. And scale it down again. A couple other buttons. We have the save button over here, which is very crucial. And then we also have the pagination to choose between entities. If I click these, you'll notice I'm not choosing another entity because I don't have another entity attached in my code. I only have one red box attached to my HUD right here. So it's only going to allow me to go back and forth on this red box. One of the biggest crucial things is this saved, unsaved changes icon right here. 
what happens is we're moving and positioning, rotating and scaling this object. But if I refresh my scene code, none of those positional changes will be saved until I do a couple things. So the first step is to click the save icon. Now, I click the save icon and you say what happens there? What we actually have to do is open up our console, some tools, more tools, developer tools. And you'll notice that when we click save, our builder HUD actually outputs the position of all of the entities to the console. So if I click it again, you'll notice it did it again right here. If I click it one more time, you'll notice it did it again. So it says red box, our label, and look, it has our position, our rotation, and our scale. Pretty cool. So all you have to do is copy that, come back to your code, and again, bracket to bracket, and paste over it. And when I click save, I go back to my scene, you'll notice our box is right there. Okay? So let's let's do that one more time. I'm going to move the box up. Okay? I'm going to click save. And then from bracket to bracket on the red box, I'm going to copy. I'm going to find the red box, transform bracket to bracket, and I'm going to paste. When I click save, you'll notice that our position is saved. Now, here's a shortcut that we've added. The position information is shown up right here. So what I could easily do is move this down or move this over. And now my position is 617. So I could just go back to my code and change this to be 617 if I wanted to do it that way. But the, the Builder HUD allows you to quickly move things around a scene without having to know the exact math. Once you do that, you can then click the Save icon and it outputs to the console where you can copy and paste from bracket to bracket. One cool thing is we can have the remote attached to many, many entities. So let's add another entity and let's call it blue box, right? Blue box. Let's call this one blue box. Again, this is the label for the entity. And I'm just going to copy and paste over everything and make sure that this is now blue. So let's save this. Go to our scene and now we should have two entities in the exact same position right because we added them to the let's choose here now look i click the red the arrow key blue box and there you go now the blue box is moving oh excuse me the screen recording Blue box is moving. I can scale this back a bit. Let's scale it down. Small box. And now let's move it over here. Move it down. Move it forward. I click save. And you can see now our builder HUD entities have output two entities, a red box and a blue box. So now I have the ability to choose which position, rotation, and scale that I want to copy, control C, and paste. So I want to change the blue box. So I'm going to come down to the blue box, bracket to bracket, go back to my code, bracket to bracket for its transform, and paste in there. I'm going to click save, go back to my scene, and now we have the blue box moved over here. You'll notice that the scene always starts with the builder tool minimized. And when you when you maximize it, it'll choose the first entity that you've attached to it, right? So again, I'm on the red. If I want to move to the blue, I choose this icon to switch to the blue and move that. 
this tool by default does not show up in production. So it only shows up locally to you in the previewer and does not show up in production mode. So you don't have to worry about doing anything else when you do DCL deploy, this will not show up. One last thing about the Builder HUD, which is really cool, is this scaffolding tool over here. And basically, this is just a platform that you can come stand on and you can use these top tools to move your platform around the scene so that you can get a little bit higher if you're doing a little bit of height building in your scene. And then now I can use these bottom arrow keys to maneuver items in the scene like this. And then again, if I want to move the scaffolding, I can move it. This returns the scaffolding back to the bottom left corner of your map. This locks you in your scaffolding with invisible walls so you can't fall off. So if I click this again and remove it, then I can fall off the scaffolding. And then I can click on that button and move the scaffolding back down to the bottom left corner to go stand on it and to move it back up. And again, it comes with an axis for X, Y, and Z to show you the color coordination, which also corresponds to the color codes of the buttons over here. So we're running up on just over 15 minutes on this video. Want to keep these short. Um, again, replay this video. We will put this on the GitHub as well. Uh, we have the GitHub right here, uh, Decentraland slash DCL Builder HUD. You can come in and find all of the information that we discussed today. Uh, to recap, the Builder HUD is a tool that we have put together based on Carl Farvel's original concept to help us position items in 3D space uh, more quickly than having to remember what this position was of this box. We now have the ability to visualize its position, to click the Save button, and output its position, rotation, and scale so that we can copy and paste it into our scene code. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks again and uh, happy programming.